Hey guys, Drifter here, welcome to Ghost in Depth. In today's episode, we'll be reviewing the L115 Sniper Rifle. The gameplay that you're seeing is one complete game of me using the L115 with my favorite setup. You're going to get to see some excellent sniper gameplay. You're going to get to see some quick scopes, some no scopes, some long shot, multi kills. You're going to get to see me use my pistol excellently. And you're also going to get to see me fail a little bit. This gameplay is not perfect, it's not super high scoring, but it does perfectly illustrate how the L115 can be good in some situations and dreadful in other situations so I do hope that you enjoy that. Let's start off the review by discussing the damage and damage multipliers and one-shot kill areas of the sniper rifles because that's what most people are interested in. The flat damage of the weapon is 98 with no drop-off. That's pretty standard for sniper rifles in Call of Duty Ghosts. It'll deal a flat damage and you'll have some multipliers on the body. And while I could get into the technical details of the exact numbers of the multipliers, the effect is that you get one-shot kills in some areas and not in others. I don't know if you remember Bob, but let's say hi Bob. It's been a little while. Uh, Bob is actually a triplet and now we have three Bobs. I just thought this was a better way to display the uh, differences between the two. Normal is pretty standard for heavy sniper rifles. Head, neck, chest, and lower torso will get you kills. If you go chrome lined, you get head, you get some arm regions, the right arm and left arm, and you get some of the right and left legs, and you get a very, very big one-shot kill area. That looks a little goofy, but I've had it explained to me that the reason it's that way is because when they're crouched and they take a knee, the entire body is a one-shot kill area. It makes much more sense that way, and with a silencer, it's very similar to the normal except you don't get kills in that lower torso, therefore I don't use the silencer on this weapon. It has essentially the same one-shot kill areas as the Maverick A2, and the exact same as the Lynx, but it's a little bit more powerful than the VKS or USR sniper rifles, so I would definitely put it in the heavy category of sniper rifles. And unfortunately, it does have one major flaw, and that's its very low rate of fire. It only fires at 40 RPM. This is slower than sniper rifles and other Call of Duty games. This is slower than the DSR and Black Ops 2 post-nerf, if I'm not mistaken. It's a very slow-firing sniper rifle, but it's made that way for a reason. Its recoil is moderate, but it's not going to be much of an issue, and I put this close to the rate of fire because at the speed that it's firing, it's almost always going to resettle back to center before your second shot. You're very rarely going to have the recoil kick so much that you can't come back down. The only problem with the recoil is it makes it somewhat more difficult for you to track your target, and when we talk about sniper rifles, another important factor with the recoil is idle sway. It has very low idle sway. It's not the lowest idle sway in the game, but it's very, very close. It's almost tied for the least amount, and it has even less idle sway when you go crouched or prone, and that's how much your sights bob left, right, up, down, when you hold your breath, whatever. So if you want to snipe with this weapon, going crouched or prone will very greatly reduce your idle sway and make you very, very accurate. It'll be much more like a laser. While the aim down sights accuracy may be very good, it has sinfully bad hipfire accuracy. Like the rest of the sniper rifles in this game, and in Ghosts in general, it got a huge, huge nerf to hipfire accuracy. I would almost never recommend hip firing with this weapon unless you are truly desperate because you are very, very unlikely to get kills with it. Aim down sights time is 0.48 seconds, which is on the slower side of things for sniper rifles. It was previously the slowest aim down sight sniper rifle in the game, but the new Maverick sniper rifle ADS is just a smidgen slower, but not much more. It's a half second instead of 0.48, so you probably won't notice much difference between the two. Slow is going to be the key word of the day. Another way in which the L115 is slow is your actual movement and run speed. That's going to be capped at 85% of what normal would be when you're using this weapon. It is a little bit faster than the Lynx. The Lynx is 85%. The other sniper rifles are 90%, but 85% run speed is much slower than a normal weapon. That, ap that applies to your handling, to your climbing, to your ladders, to your running, sprinting, walking, aim down, you know, sidestepping, everything thing, and it's kind of tough to deal with. It makes you a much slower target than, say, somebody with a submachine gun. And slow again on the reload, you have four seconds for the empty reload, three seconds, and some change for if you have a bullet in the chamber or not, and the cancel time is 2.1 seconds. However, I have heard that there has been a nerf to the cancel time to make it impossible to reload cancel with this weapon, and one of the things that Infinity Ward likes to do is they really like to tweak the reload and the reload cancel abilities of sniper rifles, so I'm not entirely sure about that, and even if I was, it is very likely to change in the upcoming patch. It's almost always being played with. Magazine capacity is limited to only five. That's kind of a scary thing. You only get five rounds in your magazine, and even when you run extended mags, you only get seven, so your reload is slow and do expect to be reloading a lot. On the plus side of things, you're almost always going to kill somebody when you do hit them. You're not going to get very many hit markers, so as long as you're accurate, it won't be that big of an issue. When it comes to scopes, I prefer the default scope on this one. Uh, the thermal scope can be nice. It highlights enemies at long ranges. 
it's easy to use and it changes your aim down sights time a little bit more favorably. The variable zoom, also nice for smaller maps. I don't like ACOG very much, but I can do variable very well. And I also use variable a little bit on Stonehaven when I want to zoom in and see people really, really far away. But again, I prefer the default scope because I like to run other attachments on this weapon, which we will discuss in a little bit. But the default scope is really what you're looking for here because you don't want to be fooling around with too many complicated things on the scope and zooming in and out and all that sort of stuff. You want to be able to focus on shooting accurately because that's what this weapon is made for. And one thing it is absolutely not in any way made for is quick scoping. This is not a quick scoping sniper rifle. You, I mean, if you're somebody like Gamma Cross or something like that, you can probably run around and quick scope people. Yeah, sure. I mean, if you try, I got a few lucky quick scopes in this. The USR is the weapon for quick scoping. It's mobile. It aims down sight fast. It gets, you know, a uh, hit marker. I mean, one shot kills in similar regions. This is the weapon for what I would call grandpa sniping or old man sniping. This is the sniper rifle for people who actually like to snipe, as in sit back, be patient, pick off other snipers, I would say guard or close down choke points and key objectives and blow people away. That's what this gun is made for, and it does that very excellently. It is excellent at long range engagements, it is excellent at being accurate and dropping people in one shots, but it is absolutely terrible at moving, at quick scoping, at reloading, at hip fire. It's god awful at anything except for extreme range engagements, which means that this is a sniper rifle for some maps and some engagements and sometimes, but definitely not any map all the time. There's some guns you can roll with just about anywhere and be okay. This is not that gun. This is a specialty weapon for long-range engagements for when you really, really want to snipe and get one-shot kills. My recommended class for this weapon, which is slightly different than what I got the gameplay with because like a derp I forgot to change a few things around. I was experimenting the evening that I was getting the gameplay. I prefer chrome lined and armor penetrating rounds. Chrome lined increases my one shot kill areas and thus effective damage. AP rounds doesn't change damage but it makes me ignore ballistic vests so I never have to get hit markers and I can punch through walls easily if I need to. Ready up and quick draw. I, this is on almost all of, my all of my classes. That's like peanut butter and jelly. It just lets me aim down sights faster and circumvent some of that low mobility. Focus and incognito, very important. Focus minimizes the already low idle sway, and it also allows me to not flinch when I'm being shot, which is essential. Incognito, at long ranges, the enemies will see you and wonder if you're a teammate or not, and they'll kind of aim down sights and look at you. And if the yellowish, orangish kind of name pops up, okay, that's an enemy, definitely going to shoot him. But if nothing pops up, sometimes they won't shoot at you, sometimes they'll be a little confused, and it definitely does help you. Keeps you off thermal and that sort of stuff, too. For sidearm, I recommended Magnum, even though I'm using PDW in the gameplay. I recommend some of the more eclectic sidearms. Uh, PDW is also good. Not my favorite. Magnum's also not my favorite, but it's kind of fun. Like I said, this is a specialty class. This is something you're going to do on long range maps, and the Magnum pairs kind of well with it. It's very fun to get those one shot kills, but really you could use anything you want. I prefer a stun grenade and a Simtex, but you can also run whatever you want if you need more perks like, say, Hardline or something like that. That's all for this episode. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope that you learned something useful. If you'd like to check out the previous episode, it's on the MK14 you click the box on the left, it'll open a new window. The next episode is going to be on the Riot Shield, of all things. That'll definitely be a kooky and fun one, and I hope you enjoy that when it comes live. As always, if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.